Welcome to the podcast. We do recover with Jared Miller, your host. And I'm Dr. Terry Sellers, your co-host. This is a podcast about recovery from addiction. We want to talk about what successful recovery can look like. Brought to you by Steps Recovery Center and the St. George Hilton Garden Inn. Hey, yo, this thing live? No. No? We're dead. Oh, boy. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 67. For episode 67, we're going to talk about steps six and seven. What? That's right. That's a really cool coincidence. Absolutely. I'm your host of this thing, Jared Miller, an advanced substance use disorder counselor. Did you? Wait, I'm not going to introduce myself until I figure this out. Did you plan that episode 67 was steps six and seven? I did. Is that just a weird coincidence? I didn't, Doc. It was just a weird coincidence. Wow, that's a cool coincidence. I'm Dr. Terry Sellers. I am board certified in addiction medicine. And to help us discuss steps six and seven, we brought on Daniel Payne. To talk about his experience with steps with steps six and seven, welcome to the show, Dan. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, so uh, let's just check in, man. Doctor Sellers, what's new and good? What's going on with you? New and good. I heard that you didn't quite make it last night. You, you got so close to your hotel room and you ran out. I had so I have so much stuff going on. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I got a. Um, I used to do uh, private detoxes, which were. I would do detoxes for high-end Cirque Lodge clients that were too fancy to... Bougie. Yes, way too fancy to detox with the commoners like you and me. And so... Um, the commoners? Yeah, you and me. Yeah, yeah, that's for us. sure. Uh, you're not a commoner, dude. You're, Thank you're, you. Yeah, you're the king of the world. We but, call him... Yeah. Yeah, he's a pain, but he's the king of the world. <laughs> You were we call say, him, what do you call him? We call him Dapper Dan because he's always oh, got, yeah. he's always dressed like real it. nice. Like he's got on the shiny shoes. That's what I'm talking he's about. He's got the nicest stuff. His car's always clean as a whistle. This is Dapper Dan, everybody. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So I got, uh, I almost pulled a super fast one on you. I got a call. I haven't done any of those private detoxes. These guys would, we'd rent a big cabin up at Sundance and they would, you know, just pay through the nose for me to come take care of them and, 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 Detox you know, them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, you know, polish their shoes and whatever else <laughs> they needed, right? Uh, I had to keep that clean. I almost went somewhere that wasn't quite as clean. We're glad you didn't. Yep. Uh, so I got a call about three days ago from a guy that I know that is a uh, runs a sober companion company and uh, he said, hey, I got a high-end client and he wants a detox and I haven't done one in two years. It's not that I couldn't do it. It's just I'm not geared up and set up for it and so he said the guy lives in malibu and um he wants to do it in his home can you guys fly to malibu like he gave me 24 hours like uh, um sure i mean the money's unbelievable i was just gonna say <laughs> no, how much is he willing to pay the that? money's unbelievable yeah so i said sure we'll try to pull it off and then the guy the sober companion flew out to malibu the day before i did and went in the home and called me the next day and said, hey, we can't, I can't control the environment. Like he probably has alcohol hidden somewhere in the house. And so, uh, so he said, we're going to come out to you. And so they flew out yesterday and I picked them up and we rented a big cabin up at Sundance and all this stuff and got them all tucked in. And I've got a, a person working with me who's a nurse practitioner that uh, can help me out. And so um, had I gone to Malibu, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. But he flew in yesterday. Anyway, I got him all tucked in. We got him all taken care of. I'm running around like a chicken with my head cut off because we got to stock the cabin and we got to, you know, got to do all kinds of stuff. I got to print. Anyway, um, I get ready to leave last night and realize that I have left my briefcase up at the cabin and I need my <laughs> briefcase. It's got my computer in it. So I run back up to the cabin. Anyway, I didn't get out of Orem until about 11 o'clock last night. So I'm driving down the road, 11 it's going to take me, you know, I'm going to get here at 3 in the morning. Yeah. I'm driving down the road, and I start getting a migraine, and then I get to about Cedar City, and I start throwing up, and I thought, I just can't drive anymore. So I so pulled off close. and spent the night in Cedar City. You were a half hour away, 45 minutes away. Only cost me, you know, Tops. only cost me a little <laughs> bit. I know. I just couldn't stay awake. I didn't think I was going to be able to make it. Well, we're glad you made so the safe decision. I made it. So new and good it. is I got a private detox going on, and I got a partner that can help me out when I'm down here. And, uh, you know, taking care of some folks and the guys paying us a tremendous amount of money. <laughs> That's fantastic. Hey, listen, 
for those of you that are viewing this, thank you. Subscribe, comment, share, right? That's always helpful. Like. Let's get Doc Sellers some more uh, private detoxes with some fancy clients. No, we don't need those. Those are those are just a thing when they happen. I don't I don't want to make that. Like I used to do that and did about 10 or 15 of them a year. I just don't have time for that much anymore. If a random one comes along and I can do it, I will, but that's not where my heart is really. Well, thank you for making this a priority and getting down here. Yeah, I appreciate made that, it. Doc. I made it. Let's check in with Daniel Payne. Daniel Payne, what is new and good in your world, man? What's going on? New and good. Well, I've settled in, getting more and more settled in, in the uh, new house we got out in uh, Hurricane. We moved out there, what, it was middle of October? You almost didn't get that place, man, because no. things got crazy, right? Things were unbelievable. I mean... The real estate market in St. George is nuts. A, what, I'm, I'm still daily just blown away that I can be in a place in my life that I can even look at getting a house. Let alone like custom building a house. Like what? From, it's a miracle from the recovery. life I had before and from not even be able to pay a buddy of mine a hundred bucks a month to stay on his couch to uh, I'm gonna be able to build a house. Right. Yeah. So yeah, we're going through the process and I would not recommend it. <laughs> uh no one told me that it would be that stressful. Oh, it's so stressful. Yeah. Um but the more hiccups came with, of course, how everything's been in the past year. Uh, prices of lumber and all building materials were skyrocketing, going through the roof. So at one point, we're halfway through it. We started our, we put the deposit and everything down in December of 2020. And they told us it'd take about, you know, nine to 11 months, somewhere in there. And we're halfway through that process. And they give us a letter that says, you know, due to the cost going up and how your contract is written, we can't charge you more. The contract will just end. So if you'd like your deposit back, we can give it to you <laughs> because we foresee we're going to have to cancel on you. Oh, man. So by this wow. point Worst in the game. Nightmare. Wow. It's just, what do we do? Because <coughs> at this point in the game, six months later from when we started looking at homes and decided to build, the prices were through the roof. Yeah. And they were yeah. no longer just in our price range for the size we wanted. For we're sure. close. For sure. Uh, by then, I'd already sold the house we were in because I was the market was hot. It was easy to sell, be done and over with, not have to worry about it. So I was doing a lease back and had to be out by October. <laughs> and we're scrambling to like, okay, what do we do? Do I get our money back and look? Do we sit tight and hope? And, uh, you know, me and the wife sat there and thought, you know what? We haven't came this far in life and been given these miracles we have to just say, fine, we're done. Lay down, give up. Yeah, what's going to happen what's gonna, is, is what's going to happen, and let's just sit tight and, and hope for the best. Um, oh, I hate that. No, I love that. I love no, that. He I'll fell back it. on his recovery principles, and he's like, no, I'm going to let that. go and let God, and it's going to be what it's going to be, right? I hate that you had hope. I, 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 that's not the part I hate. I hate, had the price of lumber gone the other direction, gone down. We wouldn't have got money that less. That guy's not no. giving you any money back. No. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, absolutely no. not. So that's pretty bogus, I think. Yeah. But whatever. Let's keep this gravy train rolling. Sean Denovan, what's new and good in your world? Uh, I'm less sick than I was yesterday. That's that's, that's good, new man. and good. So yeah, there you go. That's, that's <laughs> you still new got that's the face better. covered up. Yeah, the yeah. Wilson. Pretty excited. Nice. <laughs> man, yeah. I just I, I think I just had the flu, but I'm being you know just respectful with the mask. Absolutely, I'm not. I'm I'm hearing all over lots of so. opinions about the mask. Ooh, oh, like everybody's that. got one. Yeah. I'm like, you want me to cough on you? Why you have COVID? I said, no, no it's the flu. I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I, so. I, I, it strikes me that uh, had that show, what was that, Tool Time? Mm -hmm. Had Tool Time uh, been filmed during the pandemic, Wilson wouldn't have needed the fence. There right? You he could have just go. had the mask and yep. it would have been just perfectly normal. So you were sick last week, weren't you? I was. I was so sick. I didn't even, I don't even remember the episode. I think to be you honest. got me sick. I think whatever you have, you gave it to me. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I had t so just so to be sure, I was that tested, awkward bear hug at the end of the episode. Probably was. Okay. I had been <laughs> tested twice for COVID before coming on the podcast because I didn't want to give anybody COVID, so I knew I didn't have COVID, but I definitely had some funk going on. Yeah, that's my new and good though. Actually, my new and good is I'm feeling better now. Still have like like that annoying cough, but for the most part, I'm you're on the downhill you're like slide. me, less sick. Yeah, I'm less sick. There yeah. you go. It's fantastic. It's great. This <laughs> is great, everybody. And it's annoying. I hear it all day. He does. So I work with I work you, with Daniel. I you mean the whining? Yeah, yeah. both the coughing and the whining. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Well, this episode is going to be out about steps six and seven. But first of all, Daniel, we just need to know, like, are you a person in long-term recovery? Are you a normie? Like, like, who are you, man? I am. I've been... Uh, you are both? Normie and... Uh, yes, both. No. Depends no. on the weekend? I, I fooled myself for He's many years cured. trying He's to say... Yeah. I didn't go to Passages, Malibu. You no. didn't? I did not. Because <laughs> they have the cure. Yeah. So I hear. No, I uh, I fooled myself for years that I was normie, right? I, uh, I'd get in recovery and then lie and manipulate myself, which we do best to ourselves, that I can drink or do drugs like a gentleman, I bet. <laughs> I just have to not do this or not do that. Right. Never worked out. Uh, now I've been uh, clean and in recovery for seven years. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Congratulations, buddy. That's Thank fantastic. You. And that seven years, what have you been able to build in that seven years? Are you married? You got kids? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about you right now. A life beyond what I could have imagined. If someone would have said while I was out there in active addiction, this is what life could look like if you'll just stop and get in recovery, I would have asked them what they're on. <laughs> right. So I want whatever you're on, buddy. If yeah. seven years ago somebody said to you, you'd be fretting about building a custom home in <laughs> yeah. seven years. <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, right, that won't yeah. be my problem. Yeah. Dream on, buddy. No, totally. I mean, That's the awesome. relationships I have with, with my family and friends is, is beyond what I could have imagined. Uh, having a beautiful family, a, a loving and supportive partner, a, a little four-year-old boy. Well, he'll be four in June, but. He's a cool little dude, man. I saw him from <laughs> Halloween. He's, a, he's, a, he's cool, man. He he's, is. He's got that long hair going on. He's just like a little surfer dude. <laughs> What's his name? Parker. Parker. That's yeah. A cool name. Yeah. 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 So, how long have you been married? Or are you married? I don't know that. Sorry. No, I've I've been with her for five years now. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. So, uh, you know, I was thirty-two. I was thirty-two when I got clean, and I thought I was past all that. You know, I'd married and divorced before a couple times before I was even thirty. Mm. So I thought it'd pass me by. I thought, you know what? I'll get clean and and I want to have a better life, but. Maybe maybe kids is not in my cart or whatever. Yeah, having a sure. family like this, so yeah, beyond blessed and beyond my wildest dreams, the miracles of recovery have just given me more than I could have ever pictured. I appreciate you letting our listeners kind of get to know you. What do you What do you do for <laughs> steps? What do I do for steps? Yeah. I do their admissions and marketing. Okay, and awesome. How long have you been working for them? Needed. I've been with them. It'll be four years this summer. Tell us a little bit about steps. Yes. So episode 67, part one is brought to us by actually Steps Recovery Centers, where they are ready to help when you're ready for them to help you. If you're ready to receive help, give them a call. You can call them at 801-800-8142. The number is 801-800-8142. And I, I'm actually a substance abuse counselor at Steps. I work with, with Daniel here. And yeah, I mean, they're great people. Yep. They've always taken really good care of me. It's like a family. It's a, it really is, you know, they're, they're, like an extended, extended family. So awesome. I think you would agree with that too. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Always treat us really good. So love those guys. Well, we're here to talk about step six and seven. Now, listen, I, I don't want to call out your character defects. Call them. But, uh, Sean, do you have that picture prepared that, that we <laughs> talked oh, about? Oh no. You're so I did pull one. Out I, of I, I did a little, found. I did a little Facebook. Yes. Stuff <laughs> and, yes. And, Daniel, is this one of your character defects? Were you a cross-dresser at one I point? I wish I actually or had hair like that. Could, can you talk to us about what's going on in this picture? What's, I mean, this is pretty, <laughs> those of you that are watching this on YouTube or Facebook, uh, this is fantastic right here. Like, check this guy out, man. <laughs> you know, I can, I can even remember when that was. You could No, I can't. Oh, you I, can? I can remember exactly which Halloween it was. Because it was right after we got back from Hawaii in like yeah, 2000, he's gonna, he's 2001. Gonna he's going to pretend like this is Halloween. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Good yeah. cover. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, what yeah. I that would say quick, too, man. Thank you. That was Good quick. thinking. Good thinking. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I've been down and out before and needed money to re-up. I know what that picture's all about. Dude. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. I no yeah. judgment here. Times are tough, man. You do what you got to do. <laughs> no, but in all, <coughs> excuse me, in all seriousness, defects of character. So I know I know we've talked, right? We've, we've been doing kind of the step series. Uh Talk to me about what step six looked like for you. You finished step four. Everybody talks about how, how tough step four is, right? Yeah. A personal inventory yeah. and how dreadful that is. Yeah. Was it just like the heavens opened up and, and the steps from that point on were easy for you? Or what was your experience? Well, just a little bit even previous to that. When I first got in recovery, I didn't think doing the steps was for me. You know, I hear, that's all you hear you go to meetings. People want to do step work and step work did this for me. And this will help us. And I thought, great. 
Good for you, Good buddy. For you, you go getters. <laughs> I'm not here for extra credit. Like I just want to be clean and be in recovery. Ooh, I like that. Uh, yeah, somehow it never worked out for me, and I was never able to get all the way involved in recovery as I should because I didn't take the time to do just that little bit of work. Obviously, in active addiction, I worked harder than I ever had in my whole life. That was the hardest job I ever had was that daily trying to get that fix, trying to keep myself I there. feel that, yeah. So how did I not think just doing a little bit of step work was so hard to get? I, uh, yeah, I totally agree. But I, again, it never worked out. I was on and off, in and out of NA for three or four years before it grabbed on. And when I came back, I said, all right, I truly want to change. I'm willing to do anything. Let's see what these steps are all about. I like it. And I slowly started getting it. So yeah, like you said, you get to, you get ready to get four, and everyone's like, "Whoa, the big one! Watch out!" Mm-hmm. Doing step four, like make sure you don't stop. Keep doing it. It will just haunt you if you stop. And for me, step four, like I knew the wrongs I've done in my life. Sure, it hurt to revisit them and look at them and have it all be on paper. That's now. the thing. I think when you compile it all on paper, it mm-hmm. strikes you how big it really is. Yeah. That's what that's what struck me about yeah. my step four is. I, I knew in my mind all the stuff I'd done, but I hadn't compiled it all. And like that became yes. overwhelming at that point. Yeah. To be totally honest, when I did step four, I was like, what's everybody, what's, what's all this, you know, you fuss about? Because you didn't do anything wrong in your life. <laughs> but but like, listen, that because, but that's exactly it. That was a perception I had, right? Is, is my step four, I get to talk about all the stuff I'm pissed off about everybody else for. It's everybody else's fault. No, for I sure. I was still in victim pool very much. And so I was looking forward to writing about all my grievances I had, my resentments that I had towards other people. <laughs> I was looking forward to that. That was not something I was dreading until my, until my sponsor flipped the script on me and asked me, what's your part, Jared? Ooh. Oh, Ooh. which you, led to, you had a part. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Which led to my step six. Yeah. Was that, w- what was your experience with that? Yeah. I didn't have the expectations on it and didn't know what to expect really because I heard about four and five so much. Yeah. Right. And that was so big and That's momentous to get through. I think that's part almost of the like thing. I've made it. I got we we four. gear up so much for four because everybody tells us about yes. it long yeah. a, long ahead of time, and we gear up so much for four, and then you get through four, and it's like okay, it is hard. It's not easy, but it's doable. Jeez. Now now it's a downhill slide. Right. That's what you think. But then right. I get a six. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a second. Now I got to look what's wrong with me. Yeah. Oh, oh I didn't sign up for this. Yeah. I don't, right. how, how do I get through this part? Yeah. And I got to ask God to take that away. Some of that stuff that's wrong with me, I kind of like. Yeah. <laughs> right? The fact, that, the fact that I'm a jerk, I don't. it doesn't bug me as much <laughs> as it does everybody else. Yeah, that, that was harder to come up with that list than it was for four, for sure. Yeah. To really look at. But, God, what a cool opportunity. I wish, I wish normal people could go through and do step work. Yeah. Because no. what other opportunity do you have to look at what's wrong in your life and what's not working and how to maybe correct it? Yeah. Does anyone ever have? Yeah, a- absolutely. And that's uh, that's the great takeaway that I got out of treatment is I wish everybody could take 30 or 60 days out of their life and stop everything and take a look at themselves. Yeah. Can you imagine what it would be what like? What a great world we would have. Yeah. Yeah. No question. Yeah, absolutely. And so, I mean, did you use your step four a little bit when you did your step six? Like, did you r- circle back to it? Yeah. Yeah. Because obviously a lot of based on how I was and the things I did wrong was because of those character defects that I had. Right. Big time. Uh, it only fueled those character defects by the wrong doings I've done. So yeah, I absolutely did. Um, kind of funny too. I can remember with, 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 uh, six and then leading into seven, I was like, okay, so I put them all down and now they're just going to go away. Just be gone. Poof. Boom. They're going to be removed. I'm going to be this like perfect person who's not judgmental. Who's not egotistical? All these things are just they're gonna be gone. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Automatic. What I realize is how cool it is that it's not that they go away. It's that now I have an opportunity to look at them. Yeah, you're aware of them. They now. come up and I have to say, Oh, that's right. I have a problem with this. There it is again. And I need to try to fix it. Yeah. So talk to me about what did your step six <laughs> excuse me look like when you were talking to your sponsor about it? Well, it's cool. We uh I was as I was getting through six and and just to the tail end of getting ready to read it off to him. We were going on a trip. Oh wow! He he came to me and said, "Hey, you know my daughter's going to go on spring break to her family's. So why don't we go? Let's go somewhere warm. Let's go somewhere and have yes. fun for a week." So I'm talking about yes, yeah. yeah it's, it's the way to do step so six. So it's what right February, there. February then. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. "Yeah, let's let's go somewhere." Oh. 
So we're looking at all these places, and we, we see the one of the best deals in, is over in Miami. Really good deals right on the beach. Cheap plane tickets. Oh, this is awesome. A few days before we go out, we realize why it was such a good deal. It was spring break for all the college kids. Oh, oh. What a crappy time to be in Miami. <laughs> yeah. What a crappy time to be in Miami for somebody who's trying to stay clean. Yeah, especially when you're working on your recovery, right? Talk about temptation, spring yeah. break in Miami. Well, I'm not the fastest mover when it comes to doing steps. So I had it had a couple years by the time I was starting to, when we were going on that trip. Oh, so you're so you're, it, you're it, cured at this yeah, point. Yeah, right? and I, you know, I could hold <laughs> I could hold someone's drink if they needed me to. Sure. No, I just at that point I've gotten myself well seasoned to not putting myself in environments that were going to be dangerous for my recovery. And yet here you are. But I was going to have no choice. <laughs> I was going to be all around yeah, it. You're just landing in the middle yeah. of an environment that's bad for your recovery. You know, it's not like we hung out on the beach and went to the big parties. We just had plenty of stuff to do around Florida. We went down to the Keys. and oh, Love the Keys. Saw some cool places in the surrounding areas of Miami. I think there was only one night where we thought, you know what, let's just walk around and see what this hype's all about, about spring break on South Beach, Miami. And it was more of just entertainment anyway. Yeah. But it was still good. I'm Look, glad looking, I had someone. Looking and pointing and laughing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm glad to be with someone uh, also in recovery and especially my sponsor uh, on something like that, you know. Your sponsor was way cooler than my sponsor. I'm pretty sure we went and grab a, grabbed a Starbucks <laughs> and then just sat in his in his vehicle and, and read off my step six. So I didn't get no trip to Miami. What about you, Sellers? Did you get a trip to Miami? You're from Florida. Well, hold on a sec. I got a quick story about Miami. All right. I have a brother. You know, I have a brother who has passed away from alcohol abuse. Yeah. Um, and we grew up quite LDS, quite Mormon. And uh, But he got, he got stuck in using alcohol. And one day, he was a realtor in Miami. He was a real estate agent in Miami. And one day I asked him, I said, hey, because I knew he had a problem with alcohol. I said, hey, have you ever tried cocaine? You know what his answer was? No. I'm from Miami. <laughs> that's all he said to me. What do you think? Yeah, I'm from Miami. <laughs> yeah, that's Miami. Yeah. I like Miami. I didn't go anywhere fun for step six. I was in Orem. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, crazy, crazy. So when I think back on step six, like I said, at step four to me, I, I honestly, the only thing I heard is, you know, you write down your resentments, personal inventory. And so then when I met with my sponsor, not to get too much into detail, but when he started asking me, what's your part in this? We started writing down words that represented my parts. And some of those words were selfish, self-seeking, dishonest, mm -hmm. um, manipulative. Um, and yeah, so then, so I have this list, right, of, of my step four. And when I circle back to step six, there is those words, right? The selfish, self-seeking, dishonest. Um, so it wasn't too hard for me to do a step six because I had already pretty much outlined a lot of my flaws from step four. Yeah. What did yeah. that look like for you? Yeah, s so somewhat of that. I mean, I'll be honest. I had to have. I had to get a big list of these are some possible possibilities mm -hmm. and look through and be like, oh yeah, that's Check super the helpful. Box on that one. Yeah. Oh, yep. There's another one. You know, to give me an idea and then write up on each one how it was and how it applied to me. Yeah, I think that's super helpful. My sponsor gave me a similar list. Like, yeah, I I, <coughs> I had a hard time identifying all of my character defects because they're just me. Yeah, you're right? so we're but used not, to them. But then I look at them like, oh, I kind of do that. Yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you guys, the sponsor, ever, like, tell you, like, no, yeah, that's you. Like, put that, oh, put yeah. that, put that oh, down. Yeah. Oh, put yeah. that down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, thanks, Dick. Right. I guess I will put that one, too. Right. Add that to the list. Yeah. So just to wrap up step six, and then we'll go to step seven in part two. Before you go on, really quick, can I do something? Sure, absolutely. Because we might have a few people listening that don't know what step six is. Yeah, absolutely. Read it, please. I didn't even think of that. We were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. That's after we had made a searching and fearless moral inventory. And then step seven, which we're going to talk about, is humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. Perfect. So for those of you that may not know what step six is. If you don't know what it is, get busy doing some step work. Don't be a poser. Don't be like well, those people. Well, we might that have some normies listening, too. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. They could try it, too. Yeah. yeah. No. All right, in the last 30 <laughs> seconds here, what did step six do for you? If, if you were just to sum it up in 30 seconds. Open up my eyes to see what the things were that I still needed to change about myself in order to be a better, happier person. 
Nice. I like it. So yeah. it was more than just the drugs and drinking. Yeah, much, more, much more. That was the basis yeah. of my issues. I love it. I love it. Sounds good. Well, we've gotten ourselves to the end of episode 67, part one. Join us for part two of episode 67, where we're going to talk about step number seven, praying to have our shortcomings removed right after this little 30 second break and a message from our sponsors. You are listening to We Do Recover with Jared Miller and co-hosted by Dr. Terry Sellers. We'll be right back after this short break with more of We Do Recover with Jared Miller, sponsored by Steps Recovery Center and the Hilton Garden Inn. Hi everybody, I'm Shalee. I'm one of the clinical directors at STEPS Recovery Center. At STEPS, we really want to focus on the individual and not just the person in addiction. We want to have the ability to help from the time you enter and tell the time you finish, whether you need healing from trauma or family issues and concerns. We got you covered from the start of your journey to the end of your journey. We're just here to help when you're ready for us to help you. We welcome you back to We Do Recover with Jared Miller, co-hosted by Dr. Terry Sellers. Brought to you by Steps Recovery Center and the St. George Hilton Garden Inn. And now with part two of our podcast, Jared Miller and Dr. Terry Sellers. Welcome back, everybody. Part two of episode 67, We Do Recover with Jared Miller. (laughs) I'm going to choke. I'm going to choke right before I... Yeah. Um, so part two is sponsored by the Hilton Garden Inn. Uh, if you or happen to be traveling through southern Utah, give them a Google search. Hilton Garden Inn takes really good care of their customers. I love it. I stayed there again. Well, I didn't stay there last night. You didn't make I, it. I already checked in this morning, but I didn't stay there last night. But I usually <laughs> stay there, and I love them. Amenities are great. The staff is great. Uh, did you? You don't. You live in Hurricane. Where do you live? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, you it's probably didn't stay in the Hilton Garden Inn last night. No, not last night. Darn it, I have before. Yeah, it's yeah, a great no, place. Jared was like, You're local, you don't get the benefits of staying in a hotel. That's yeah. absolutely right. It's a great place. I'm yep. gonna get a room for me and my wife this weekend instead. That's what he told me. I'm, <laughs> not, I'm gonna put you up there if you need it. Thank room. you, okay? thank you. Uh, but they're really good to our, they're really good to us and really good to our guests and that sort of thing. So, uh, give them a shot at your business, they're lovely. Yeah, we have our NA convention there every year. For the last mm, that's nice. four years now. Oh, that's nice. Awesome place. Yeah. yeah Great that's cool. place. Good people work with us very well. Who else we got for a sponsor in part two? Hey, listen, if you're looking to get some sweet recovery gear, go to recoverystrong.com. You're going to click on the gear tab. As you can see, if you're watching this on uh, Facebook or YouTube, they got amazing apparel. They got some hoodies. They got some t-shirts. They got some hats. I usually am rocking some recovery strong stuff while I'm on here. Today, I don't. But uh, definitely go and, and check them out. They're all about um, strengthening recovery and something addiction. Man, I'm blanking it today. Don't worry about it. Strengthening recovery, overcoming addiction. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we love those guys. Check them out. Man, I'm such a hey, amateur at this thing. No, man. listen. We're 67 episodes in. You, I still can't get att- taglines right, man. You attacked that so much better than I did the Hilton Garden Inn. I started to talk about the Hilton Garden Inn and started choking. So <laughs> don't don't beat yourself up. That was just fine. Hey, uh, let's get back to it. So we're with, we're with. Uh, oh, my gosh. Daniel Payne. Uh, I could think of Payne, but I couldn't think of Daniel's first name. But he's a Payne. We're That's with sure. Daniel Payne. <laughs> works for Steps Recovery Center in marketing and admissions. And uh, we were talking in the first segment about step six, and he sort of summed up what step step six meant for him. And I think what what one of the things you said that I really liked is uh, so people look at these steps and they think the steps are all about us quitting drinking or quitting using drugs, or they're not. They're about transforming character. They're about becoming better humans, about becoming better citizens. And mm-hmm. you summed that up. I don't remember exactly how you said it, but when when Jared asked you what step six did for you, <coughs> I think it was beautiful. Yeah, I think that's... Thank you. Yeah. You know, I, I actually love that you brought that up, Doc, because when I was going through the step work for the very first time with the sponsor, my sponsor made it very clear to me that behind every single step, there's a principle. Behind every single step, there's a principle. And I used to be able to name them straight off the top of my head, but like step one is basically denial, like overcoming denial. Step two is increasing belief. Uh, step three is letting go of, of control. Uh, you know, step four and five is, is um, 
basically looking for forgiveness. Like when you talk about resentments with other people, you know, what is it going to take for you to, to forgive that? Right. This is how I kind of understood it. So don't, this, don't quote me. This is the way I was taken through. Um, six and seven is, is about humility, right? Like humbling yourself and realizing that you have some, some defects and you have some stuff, some things that you need to work on. Where, did you have a similar experience with that where your sponsor kind of said, Hey, check it out. These aren't just like, there's a principle behind each one of these things. And if you learn it, you can help transform your life. Yeah, no, totally. And, and I think especially understanding why they were in the order they were in mm -hmm. was huge too. Cause there's obviously many times in the beginning where you're like, wow, I've heard all these people. I need to go to them immediately and make up for this. No, just wait. That'll come. Yeah. Right. And I'm so glad that I followed my sponsor's uh, suggestions on holding off on doing that because leading up to those points prepares you each step of the way, each one you're doing is preparing you for that next one. And the, where I was in my life, uh, in the beginning of steps, obviously prepared me to get to six and especially there when I was getting to like nine. Oh, absolutely. And I love, I love that you say that too, because like you said, you know, we all have a week and we want everybody to forgive us and yeah. have everything go back to I'm normal. I'm clean. I'm sorry. It's okay now. Right. Yeah. And, and one of the, yeah. one of the things that it says in, in some literature out there, I, I want to make sure I'm, you know, they want to stay anonymous at press radio and film and that's fine. I respect that. So I'll just say this in some recovery literature out there, it talks about clean time speaks for itself. And it also talks about how oftentimes when we get into recovery, our families don't even believe our clean time. Like, because we've, we've manipulated them and we've lied to them and we've put them through so much stuff. And to be honest, if, if you had this experience, there were times that I did lie to my family and say, oh, I, I'm clean when I had clearly relapsed. And so they're, they're just used to it. It's just the same song and dance. Mm -hmm. and so the fact that eight and nine, when I, when I actually get to that step, hopefully I got a little bit of time underneath my belt. Yeah. And like it talks about, clean time speaks for itself. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, big time. So my, so my example of that is my wife and I made a vow that she was going to ask me every day if I had taken any Lortab. <laughs> That's the day I switched to Darvacet. Or <laughs> right. Or no great. point. Sure have I have not taken any Lortab today, honey. <laughs> right. 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 Good. Yeah. I, another thing you pointed out that I think is important is um, uh, uh, the order. Right. I mean, yeah. you ever had a sponsor say, hey, start at step seven. No, right. not once. <laughs> that doesn't work, right? The order and the patience to take that in that order and to take it slowly and not try to – the goal of 12 steps isn't try to get from 1 to 12 in, in, in 12 minutes or no, you know, in even 12 weeks, whatever it may take. Uh, I think that's an important concept. And then I would – I, I was going to save this for the very end, but I would challenge loved ones or even just acquaintances – Take the look at these twelve steps and pick a concept in your life that you might need improvement with. Mm. See if that could work for you. I mean that that might help. Yeah, the, <coughs> there's really no situation I can think of where the steps would help somebody's life. Yeah, no question. It's yeah. such a huge difference. Well, we had this conversation the other day, right? Because uh, again, um, one of my f my very first sponsor I worked with, after I made it all the way from step one to step twelve, he said, "Now I want you to circle back from six up to twelve again." And just continue to kind of circle, the, you know what I mean, the, the top ones to really hit on those. And, and I said, is that was that your experience? Because, again, different sponsors are going to do things a different way. Mm -hmm. And it's typically the way they were taught, right? And so they're kind of passing it down. And you said no. Now, why did you say no? Remember that conversation we had in your yeah, office? Yeah, no, because it was just do them at the beginning because there's always going to be something in your life, in an area of your life that you could be working on. Yeah, like uh, for something example, something that could have came up in between the time you first did step one or two or three that are more uh, prevalent in your life now that need the work. Yeah. So to be more specific, maybe the first time you do a step one, it's about admitting that you're powerless over that substance, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. heroin, cocaine, alcohol, I mean, whatever it is, you know, the chemical. Well, maybe the next time you circle back through the steps, it's people mm -hmm. admitting that you're powerless over people or situations with your employers or family or you know, certain friends, like, yeah, so I like it. All areas of life. Yeah, the other thing that my sponsor said to me, and I'm sure you guys have heard this or done this even, but uh, I wake up every morning and do one, two, and three. Like, I don't do it in the thorough with the thoroughness. I did it when I originally did the 12 steps, but uh, I wake up every morning and remember to myself, I'm powerless over drugs and alcohol, and I uh, I can't 
seem to do this on my own and I might let somebody else help me with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah great. <coughs> That's fantastic. I actually, I really like that. That's cool. Yeah. Let's talk about seven specifically though. Cause this episode 67 is about steps six and seven. So we've talked a little bit about step six defects of character. We also uh, have step seven and then I want to circle back for a minute on step six, but let's, let's get seven knocked out. What was your experience with step seven, Daniel? Like well, what again, was going on in your life? What was, what was the, well, I was, you know, still pretty fresh in recovery, just under a couple years. So I'm really just getting reacclimated to life, figuring what's working and not working in my life, where I can make improvements, which, again, what an amazing opportunity to be able to do the steps to get that opportunity to try, to try and rebuild my life. Uh, without doing that in the beginning and, and getting to work, it wouldn't have had me where I was strong enough in my recovery. And it wouldn't have put me to where my life is now. That's for sure. Um, you know, like sp- we're, we're sitting on that beach again. So we we had little hammocks up by the hotel. I read it off to him. And then I was able to go down to, to the beach and kind of do a, you know, let the oceans symbolically be taking them away. And, and again, I, now I understood what seven was all about was just bringing it up in the forefront of my mind where these defects of character are. So when they do come up, they're going to go away because they're not just going to magically go away. We're not perfect human beings. We're not doing You didn't wake up the next day and all of a sudden you had zero no, yeah. character defects. And I thought maybe <laughs> leading up to that point that that could be possible. I was like, you know, how are these going to be magically removed? And I don't know. I'll trust the process because it'd be sure cool if I wake up perfect. But obviously that wasn't the you case. You didn't so wake up perfect. No, you're saying, okay. No, no woke That's up the same. But again, they were just brought to my attention. So now I can focus on them and try to correct them when they do come up or try to keep them at a minimum. I think that's the problem with the steps. I thought it was perfect before I started the steps. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and as I went through the steps, it's like, man, I'm not. It's, I'm, I'm a little worse than I thought. But so thankfully, yeah. you surrender in the beginning and realize that yeah. that's not the case. Yeah. There are a lot of stuff that comes up that totally changes your mindset when you yeah. do the steps for sure. I, I just want to share a little bit. Um, I had a similar kind of experience as, as you, uh, Daniel. So when I worked the step six and seven with my sponsor, basically after we talked about all the different character defects, what they meant, what the opposite of them were, you know, if somebody who's not, if somebody who's the opposite of dishonest, what does that look like in their life? You know, do they, do they stop telling little white lies? Do they, right? So we, we really dissected each one of the characters of defects which there was a lot on there, boy. Um, and then he said to me, do you think that if you invited somebody else into your life, into your head, into your spirit, into your energy, that you could begin to correct these things and be the opposite of these things? Hmm. So in other words, if, if, if my char- one of my character defects was being uh, self-centered. Now listen, that's a big joke today because the freaking podcast has my name in it. I get that, okay? But, but again, not perfect. It's working on being perfect. But so the, the concept of seven for me was, okay, Self-centeredness, that's a thing for you. Do you think it's possible if you prayed to have that overcome or removed that you could start behaving the opposite of self-centeredness and start caring about other people? And, and or, you know, like I talked about with the dishonesty thing, if you prayed and invited somebody else into your life to change that, is it possible that you could start being more honest? That's what seven looked like for me. Hmm. I like that. What about you, Doc? Well, I'd like to thank our listeners for listening to episode 67 of We Do Recover with Some Random Dude. <laughs> What's that about? Listen, That's about the podcast about, having your name let's on Let's it, talk dude. about that for a second. I want to get this just, just when. <laughs> oh, you're feeling guilty. My now. favorite literature is We Do Recover. Like, that is my favorite all time literature that is in the recovery communities, right? And I wanted it to be, I wanted this podcast to be We Do Recover because it was my favorite piece of literature. However, that was already taken on all of the social media platforms. Like multiple times. Even. Multiple times. And it was already taken on all the podcast platforms. Right. And so what we did is we just put with Jared Miller, not like, oh, if you listen to this, you're going to recover with me. More of just like, I'm hosting this thing and I really like this title. So believe it or not, it wasn't because I'm, uh, you know. I think that egotistical or self-centered. I, it was I, just, just I think g- we all believe that. Just to get the name. I think we all believe that. And and b- to be honest, the, this podcast started as an idea in your mind. This podcast started being recorded in the attic of my buddy's yeah. business. This started as an idea in your mind, not in my mind. I came on. I came on long after the idea had been germinated and nurtured and all that. But stuff. you're the star of the show, <laughs> and that's why we have. No, you I'm the. I'm the. <laughs> 
He is. He is. I'm a random dude. We love you, Doc. All right, so let's get back to that. So what did your step seven look like for you? Step seven. Well, you know, I think everybody's step seven is going to be based around sort of their concept, first of all, of who and what God is to them. Oh, good point. And so, you know, I grew up the predominant religion. My What religion is that? I don't know of any predominant religion. It's, uh, I was, I was, um, it's on his Astros, <laughs> I was an Astro Zaoist. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. I don't know mm-hmm. what that is. Uh, I, I grew up Mormon. I didn't grow up in Utah, but I grew up Mormon, and I had a well-formed concept in my mind of who God was to me. And I think that's a, a previous step or two is sure. God as we understand him. And my concept of God was well-formed in my mind. I didn't struggle with that concept at all. And so, and, and prayer was a thing that that I had been told all my life I should be doing, right? Mm-hmm. And so... I have a format that where I ask God for things in in my life. And so the, the, the step seven where I ask God to remove my shortcomings was not a difficult concept for me. I, I, the difficult concept was identifying them and being willing to let go of them. But asking God to remove them, that, wasn't a, that was not a difficult concept for me at all. That wasn't foreign or difficult for you? Right. I, I, but that's... That's not the same case. That's not the case for everybody. Not everybody grew up with maybe as much, and I hate to use the term, but maybe as much <coughs> religion as I did. Mm-hmm. And this isn't about religion. That's why, <laughs> that's why I said I hate to use the concept because this, these things are not about religion. They're about spirituality. I love that you said that. Who are you golfing with this weekend? Uh, a dude who follows Christ. No, oh, but what's his name? His name's Christian. That's why so Christian that. came on in a previous <laughs> episode i wish i knew the episode so that i could give it a shout out but christian came on in a previous episode and he talked about that he talked about how he had to separate religion and spirituality Mm -hmm. and he talked about how the spirit of recovery is not something that you're going to find in an organized Mm -hmm. right and and so yeah that's a good concept to yeah and i think uh, honestly and i think christian brought this out when we talked to him but i felt the same thing I, I um, got some of my concepts and I formulated some of my beliefs around my religion. I actually, and this is my fault primarily, but I didn't really find spirituality in my religion. I found spirituality in my recovery. Mm. That's when I started to actually develop a relationship with God that was based on how I understood God and how I felt like he understood me. And that stuff, that spirituality stuff all came to me through recovery. I didn't really learn that in my religion. So I was It strengthened I, your religion, though, it sounds like, because well your it, concept it was. It did, so. but I was really good at um, looking like I looking like I was some righteous dude. Right, right. Kind of the, the facade. Yep. Yeah. I, I yeah. did that really well. I looked really Mormon. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. That is, that is tricky for a lot of people, though. That, yeah. that G word scares people away that's a pro- that is a problem for some you know, people I, I hear people saying yeah you know the 12-step thing is not for me because it's i don't believe too in religious God. yeah it's not I religious at God. all yeah it's a higher power of your understanding right that's your as understanding. we understood him yeah not as anybody so, else understands him as you understand him i mean i guess in the beginning i you know i i tr- too had family in the predominant religion so i was somewhat involved in it um but i still had I guess my battles in the beginning of what is it going to look like for me, but you just trust the process Mm -hmm. and then take it as it's coming. And I got a clearer understanding of what it was to me. You know, I, I, I struggled with the concept. I'm glad we're talking about this. I struggled with the concept of God at first. I'll be the first to admit it. I did. I, but it's because of my own issues. Mm -hmm. It was because of the guilt that I had of the things that I knew that I had done wrong, the people that I had wronged the right, like all the stuff that I had learned um, growing up, I, I it, it wasn't that I didn't believe in God. It was that I was ashamed that I had turned away from him. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so w- what was your concept? W- you were raised in the predominant religion in Utah. Was it the God of your childhood? Or did you no. def- redefine nope. it? Nope. It, it came into something completely different than that. What would that look like? Um, you know, in the beginning it was working with my sponsor. He said, well, here's what I did. No, I came up with, here's what my God of my understanding is not. Oh, okay, so process He's of elimination. He's not judgmental of me. He doesn't want the worst for me. You know, thinking He's of these things of what you. he is not. And then 
get to what it is. Um, you know, I still don't have to put uh, a, a face or a picture mm -hmm. to the God of my understandings. Mm -hmm. It's something that is more powerful than me. I couldn't tell you what he wears. I couldn't tell you if he has a beard or not. Uh, it's just a, a, is a power beyond me. Um, yeah. That's my, that's, that's, thanks for bringing that up because I've been thinking this for a minute now. The thing I learned from our steps earlier than step six and seven is that even if, so I, I have tons of people who have said to me, I don't believe in God and it's not going to work for me. The one thing I learned from earlier steps is I, I, you don't have to totally comprehend exactly who God is. You have to comprehend one thing. It ain't you. Mm -hmm. It has to be a power higher than yourself. And the rest, the details is not that relevant. Just the fact that God wasn't me. Yeah. I yeah. got myself into the problem. I'm probably not going to be able to get myself out of the problem. And that took a long time for those of us that struggle with humility to, um, to get to, but Man, that, that concept of I don't know who God is necessarily, although I didn't struggle with it too much, but I know who it isn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's what helped me again the most, yeah. that, what it's not. Yep. Thank you guys for listening to this. Hopefully you guys are into the step work stuff. If not, get into it. Like I, Here's the thing I'm going to say about step work, and then I want to move into a little bit more of Daniel's story. I always love talking to people about what was your, what was your breaking point, what was your rock bottom, and how did you rebuild your life, right? And so I want to get to that with Daniel. Um, I, by the time I started my first step to the time I finished my 12th step, I could not, as much as I didn't like the idea of doing 12, the 12 steps in the, in the beginning, I could not deny that my life had gotten significantly better. I was less ashamed. I had remended relationships. I was more aware of the things that I was doing wrong that was messing up my life, continuing over and over and over and over again. I was more aware of the things that led to my substance use. Mm -hmm. That's how the, ch the steps really changed my life. So, yeah. Yeah, well, like you said, if if you're on on the fence of of getting them started, why is it so difficult in our minds to put forth a little bit of work towards our recovery? If we truly want it, it shouldn't be that hard. Because I was willing to put forth a ton of effort yeah, in active too. addiction. The yeah. thing is, it just ton. doesn't quite seem like work because there's such a giant payoff at the end, which is there terrible. Is. But Man, if you look back at the work you did to find drugs and alcohol, it's a lot of work. Yeah. So and and that, that was there's half the, the amount of effort I put in that in recovery that I know I could be okay. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, Daniel, we got a, a couple minutes left on here. Talk to us briefly. You've been fantastic. A lot of people come on and share their stories. I talked to you about it. You were cool doing a, a topic-based conversation. And I love the topic-based conversation because we all get to get in on yeah. it. However, I do want to touch a little bit on where was your moment of desperation? And where did, what did that look like for you in building your life back? Let's spread a little message of, of hope here to the people listening. Well, you know, I was in and out of jail a few times. And I think like everyone in jail, you sit there and think, all right, I'm going to change. It's time to do something different. But almost every time I go out and I wouldn't do something different. But then they let you out. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The doors open up. Uh, that last time <clears throat> on July 13th of uh 2017, uh, no, it would have been, excuse me, 2014. You know, I sat there in jail and thought, God, how did I get here? Mm. Like, I know how I got here in this cell, but how did I get here in my life where this has become the norm? Where this is my life, this is my reality. 32 years old, and this is what I have to show for. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I was in court that day. My aunt, lovely aunt, was gracious enough to take me to court. She had to watch me get thrown in the cuffs and, and have the judge tell the bailiff to take me away. And mm. Not too long before that, my mom got to see me get arrested. Mm. And I just I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. And again, because I had those little brief stints in recovery before, I knew what it was going to take. I knew where I had to go. You know, For me, uh, the rooms of N.A., is what's helped me a lot. And, and I knew going back there was something that I needed to do. Uh, I was on county probation up in Salt Lake. And that's what kept me that there. That's what brought me back up there when I moved down to St. George a few years earlier. So I asked that judge, I said, put me on APMP, please. Put me on a higher level so I can transfer out and, and get down, back down to St. George and get around my mom, my sister, and some people that I know that are in recovery and doing well. And I had a better chance down here. Um, 
So I knew I had to come in this time and do the work though. Like I said, thinking of people that do steps as go getters. Well, I guess I'm going to be a go getter cause I just want to change. They had something you wanted. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a sponsor, not just to look cool, not just to, and so my friends asked if I had a sponsor that I wouldn't have to sell them. No, I wanted one that could show me to how to walk through the steps. I picked a sponsor because I want what he had it. What he, what he had it. I want what he had in his life in recovery. Uh, so, you know, I wanted to get to work, wanted to put that pen to paper. And uh, biggest part two, I became a part of that no matter what club. Because no matter what, on any given day, I'm not going to pick up again. No matter what. No matter what. I don't care what happens. I now know drugs are not going to be the answer for me anymore. No excuse. No Nothing. justification, no, no rationalization. Yeah, one of my favorite phrases. No yeah. matter what, it's not going to work for me anymore. Not going to help. What's the one thing that you love the most about your recovery in the last 30 seconds? The one thing I love the most, that I don't have to live like I used to. <laughs> well, that I don't have to wake up dope sick. That I don't have to go to sleep realizing the things I've done that day to get the dope. Uh, that I can have that peaceful peace of mind on a daily basis. I love it, man. Thank you so much for coming on. This has been an awesome episode. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate You're it. Welcome. Super nice to meet you, and yes. uh, I appreciate you discussing with us. That's nice. Doc Sellers, it's always a pleasure, buddy. Thank you. Love Fun. you, bro. Thanks, Sean. Check us out next week. Thank you for joining us today on We Do Recover with Jared Miller. Help us spread our message of hope. Like, comment, and share. If you have any topics or ideas for future shows, please share that on our Facebook page. That Facebook page is We Do Recover with Jared Miller. If you or a loved one needs help, please reach out to us. Again, thank you for listening. Brought to you by Steps Recovery Center and the St. George Hilton Garden Inn. This has been a production from A Podcast Studio.